Welcome to a special In the Money Players podcast focusing on the New York Bread Showcase Day at Saratoga on Travers Eve, Friday afternoon. Nick Tamaro here joined by Marshall Graham, 2020 Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge winner, New York Bread owner, and dual, what, three-time New York Bread Award winner or two-time? Only two-time. We, di- we didn't capture it this year's Seafoam, but uh, last year, lucky move was the champion older dirt uh, mayor, and the year before, a homebred critical value was the champion two-year-old filly, so... Won it twice, couldn't quite get the third one home at the wire, but always love racing New York breads. I'm a New York breeder, uh, have some New York homebreds. Uh, we'll debut the um, we'll debut Looms Boldly, uh, which is a New York bread half to critical value, uh, named after our illustrious leader, Pete Fornatel. That horse uh, is set to debut at, uh, um, at uh, Belmont's Golden Sense. And so that golden sense, uh, half to critical value, should be slated to start in uh, the upcoming Belmont at Aqueduct meet. Yep, looms boldly. Again, excited to see him run. And again, we're committed to the New York Bread program. Always excited to see a, a day like uh, um, today with the six big stakes races. I was lucky enough um, a couple years ago to win the uh, uh, West Point with Dot Matrix. Uh, and uh, and uh, excited to see what this group does. No question about it. In fact, we like to thank the New York Thoroughbred Breeders for making this possible. And I have a couple of ads that I'm going to read on their behalf. The first of which is that the New York Bread Program is unsurpassed in purses of any regional state bread program. Get involved by purchasing a registered New York bread at the upcoming Keeneland September yearling sale, September 12th through the 24th. New York Thoroughbred Breeders Incorporated works to protect the incentives and awards of the New York Bread Program, including $181 million dollars in total purses per year, support the New York Bread Program by joining NYTB at nytbreeders.org slash membership. Let's get into this card where we will cover the six stakes races that are sprinkled throughout the program. Eleven races on tap. We'll get started as normal at 105 Eastern time. The first stake race is the first race of the day, the Seeking the Ante. And Marshall, this is a really fascinating matchup of three super impressive debut winners two of whom we've actually seen at this Saratoga meet, one of them that is going to be the favorite number three, Maple Leaf Mel, we saw just 16 days ago. And boy, that was an impressive debut. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, they knew the horse's bet. The horse ran big. Um, it looked visually impressive. The number backed it up. I do, you know, I, I mean, my concern is the horse coming back off short rest um, is fast. Is it substantially faster than the others who are coming back with a full cycle of rest? I don't know. I, you know, to me, it's going to be one of those where I judge the board and, and look at the best price of the three. I think they're all fairly evenly matched. I don't know whether, you know, is the board going to tell us who's working the best as well? And is it all we baked in the prices? I'm probably, if you sort of put a gun in my head at this point, uh, you know, based on the projected prices, I probably take the number five miracle, um, uh, you know, uh, given the, given the little bit more rest than, um, than Maple Leaf Mel. I'd probably take that horse given the price, given the the draw uh, stalking from the outside uh, to get it done here for a uh, reader set. I was going to ask you how much you, I guess, gave credit to Miracle for being drawn outside. I also think that this horse gets a similar trip to the one she did on debut when she stalked outside arrival. The runner up in that debut, Banterra, was a pretty highly regarded Steve Asmussen trainee. Worth noting, the third place finisher did come back and break her maiden. Uh, yesterday um didn't exactly wow anybody but won the race pretty handily it was against maiden claiming competition song parody is now in the care of christoph clement off of that positive debut what do you any insight into what you do in races like this where three horses are just second time starters that pretty much all blasted out of the gate is there an effort made on your part to figure out who might be the speed of the speed yeah i mean it's hard to tell i mean it's hard to tell in terms of what is going to be each is each um each runner's intent i mean i guess sort of looking at some of the pace numbers, maybe Maple Leaf Mel is the fastest of these. Um, but, you know, I think that, uh, I think that song parody, uh, Manny Franco is going to sort of, their hand is forced from the one hole. And so I think all that works to Miracle's advantage. I will say that it's really nice to see Jeremiah Englehart have a, you know, have a nice two-year-old. I think he's having a very good Saratoga meet. Um, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of his 23% win percentage this year has come at, uh, 
you know, taking bad horses to Finger Lakes and winning over 30% there. But he's, he's, you know, again, quietly had a very good meet. And this is a very nice two-year-old for uh, Coach Parcells. And it's good to see the two of them, um, uh, you know, working together and, and getting a nice horse and, and doing big things. I'm certainly rooting for Maple Leaf Mel. I, I just think that sort of the way this sets up and the way the draw is and given the 16 days rest, I'm, I'm going to go to the outside. The opener is the Seeking the Ante, who was the second dam of the recent $3.5 million two-year-old that debuted for Bob Baffert last week at Del Mar. Let's go to the third race, the Albany at a mile and an eighth on the main track. Brings together three-year-olds in this group of five. We have a recent winner over this oval in the one-price discipline. He will be joined in the gate by Montebello, who beat him two starts back, as well as the winner of the New York Derby, Barese, who draws number four at the four position. Uh, who do you like? Um, I'm probably going to go with the class and, and chicken out here and just take the race. Day. I just, I just think, um, uh, you know, it's been facing a little bit better, uh, you know, with that, you know, the, the nice group you faced in the Ohio Derby ran well in the New York Derby. Uh, you know, the, these two races, this, this, the, uh, the Albany and the fleet Indian being a mile and eighth. I think that's, you know, that's a big tough distance for these horses. I know that price discipline, um, you know, won that race, but it was, you know, it, it was an, on a sloppy sealed course. And so I, you know, I guess I have a little concern whether a, that number holds up. I know it matches his number before, but whether that number holds up at that distance and whether the horse really wants to cover that route of ground. So I, I'm going to go with the chalk here and, uh, and, and take a brace for Mike Maker. Who starts back when Montebello beat price discipline he did so in pretty game fashion. He is now in Todd Pletcher's barn off a sale at a Horses of Racing Age sale. Is there any chance, in your opinion, that Montebello wires this field? I think he could. I think he, you know, in, in you know, I think he set a very fast pace that day um, and, uh, you know, you know, dueled and, and held on. And I think there's a chance. Look, the speed's been holding. He's a curling. He's bred the run all day. I'm not I'm not necessarily big on these horses that are, you know, bouncing from barn to barn, going from Baffert to Terra Nova you know, sort of this broad going from Baffert to Pletcher. I mean, ultimately, these horses long term don't have the greatest of track records. And so that's probably why at that number I'd play against. But yeah, I can see that scenario. $325,000 Montebello was purchased for out of his last start. Now in the care of Todd Pletcher, who has five wins at Saratoga this Travers week. That is the Albany race number three, where incidentally, I think price discipline is going to win. Um, but that being said, I do think Barese is interesting and I'm, I'm want to see if Montebello can wire the field, but I think price discipline's last win, albeit against one other than competition did come against elders. And I don't think the surface moved him up quite that much, but we will see an interesting version of the Albany. Let's go to race five, the fleet Indian at a mile and an eighth on the dirt, where I think when all is said and done, we're going to see a pretty solid favorite in number two, Fingal's K for Dave Donk, who was victorious in wire to wire fashion last time out. Now, I should say I shouldn't be flippant and say that that she'll be a pretty big favorite. Venti Valentine is a horse that will get plenty of support as well. A New York Bread Award winner from 2021. Is her form just gone? I think so. And I think that that maybe the better play to try to get her get her out of the exact. I, I think that the David Donk uh, uh, Fingal's cave is is going to is, you know, should be the controlling speed, uh, you know, proven at the distance um, and and. I just think Vente Valentine seems to be going in the wrong direction. I mean, coming off a bit of a layoff, but, but, but hard to like off, you know, again, much better horses against much better horses. Um, but, you know, ultimately I, I, I was not a big fan of the gazelle. I think that number's a little bit too high. And, um, and so I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the now horse and uh, you know, I'm going to go with the, what should be the big favorite and, and maybe try to work uh, Vente Valentine off the, off the exact. The, the problem is I do think they, I, I do think there's not much to go with, with these other horses that, you know, Pletcher, the letter inspire you jumping from six furlongs to a mile eighth. I know, you know, if there's anyone who can do this, it's going to be Pletcher. I know he's hot, but it does seem like a, a big ask and that horse is going to take a lot of money. So, um, you know, it, it'd be nice to figure out a way to take Venti Valentine off the exact. I'm not quite sure how to do it. Um, but yeah. That's, that would be my betting strategy for the race. Bendy Valentine ran tremendously well against Open Company last year. One of my issues with her is that, you know, in search of her, her, her forgotten form or lost form, I wish she was getting an opportunity a little shorter. 
you know, if this was a mile, seven furlongs or a mile, I'd feel pretty strongly. I think she's still a filly with a lot of talent, but it looks like it just might be a little too much to ask in that fifth race, the Fleet Indian. There are three more stakes races on this 11 race card. Let's go to race number seven, the funny side at six and a half furlongs on the main track. And I'll tell you, Marshall, I thought much like the Seeking the Ante, there were a few pretty impressive maiden winners that are now stepping forward into stakes company, but they are going to have to have their running shoes on to beat Andiamo Afrense, who if he runs back to either of his last two races, the margin might be from here to Florence. Yeah, I think this, this you know, again, fast horse, um, just towers over them figure-wise, uh, you know, drew well. So, um, you know, certainly the horse to beat, uh, uh, they'll definitely, you know, one of these other horses really has to take a, a major step forward. We're talking, you know, if you're just sort of looking at it in terms of buyer figures, going to have to improve by, you know, uh, you know, eight lengths. And so it, it seems improbable, I, you know, probably the smart way to try to figure out to play an exacta here. Um, but I think, uh, I think uh, um, this uh, Florence uh, named horse is going to be a tough beat. If he gets beat, who does it? Um, I'd probably, uh, go with the Clement on the, on the inside, um, again, set an extremely fast pace that day. And, um, and so, you know, again, the horse that set a fast pace may get the lead, uh, may get the lead here and not look back, uh, you know, a little bit worried about the rail draw, but again, uh, that day, uh, you know, 22, 45 and two was faster than faster early than, um, uh, you know, the, a group of starter 50. And so, you know, he could be a horse that just based upon his pace numbers, um, you know, would be one to put in the exact, uh, you know, I think his, his second best figure horse, but, um, you know, based on pace figures. And, and even if you sort of look at his time form, U.S. Um, pace adjusted number is actually fairly reasonable. It's actually an interesting point. I was going to bring that up. The t- on time form U.S., this horse is actually just as fast as the likely favorite on the Amo Afrodense. So I think if you believe that, you know, they might try that same front running gambit they did on the debut, this horse is a little dangerous. I thought Donegal Sergis was a really impressive debut winner. I wonder if he was also kind of tugged into that race earlier than he wanted to be there. And and he looks a little bit more like a, a steady running, grinding, potentially router type that might just really excel with more distance. The problem is I could see him getting totally run off his feet by the one and five in here, and that might end up doing him in. But I will say that I think as the distances go on, Donegal Sergis really benefits. Yeah, I mean, he might have had a little bit of a setup, but, you know, not a lot of horses have come from from much off of it anyway. I mean, they were going fast in front of him, but, I mean, he he ran off and ran off like a very good thing. Um, also coming off, a, you know, a 15-day layoff, right? So, so wheeling back pretty quickly for this spot. Yeah, tough spot, no doubt about it, to make his stakes debut. Let's go to the turf. Race number eight is the Yaddo at a mile and a 16th on the inner turf course we have some runners that are coming out of open company efforts that are really beyond just respectable the horse that's probably the most decorated in the field has done all of her damage on the main track that's number six make mischief who recently won the critical eye back in may at, at the late uh, in the in may at the belmont meet uh, you have pure Bodhi who comes in off a win marvelous mod who beat open company Last time out as well, Classic Lady, who was last year's Ticonderoga winner and the third place finisher in the Yaddo. I thought this was a really fun and evenly matched group. Yeah, I mean, these are, I, I struggle with these races. They, they're wide open turf races that look, um, uh, you know, where, where a lot of the competitors look very similar figure wise. And, um, uh, you know, it's really kind of all about what kind of trips they're going to get, what kind of, you know, how fast the pace is going to be. And so it, it's, it's really hard to tell sort of looking at this race, how it might be run. I, I never know what to do with a horse like make mischief where they, you know, it, you know, we have this nice horse that's won six of 19 times in this, you know, stakes winner on dirt. And then they're, you know, trying turf and, and, you know, I, nothing necessarily jumps out to me to make me think this is a turf horse. I'm not, you know, you get a horse that runs a 99 on dirt. I'm not sure why they're messing around. But, uh, you know, again, it's New York bread stakes. And, and I guess, suppose why not give it a shot? They, the, the workout, um, you know, they worked the horse out. And they must have been pleased with what they saw to give it a shot. But, you know, again, this is a really tough race. I guess if, you know, sort of if I had to make a pick here, I'd probably go with Marvelous Mod. I thought, you know, again, closed well into a fairly tepid pace. Um, you know, as a horse just on the improve, working its way through these conditions, I, I tend to, you know, if I'm not going to go with one of these stakes horses, I tend to look at, you know, horses that sort of 
Had they worked their way through their New York bread conditions? Had they worked their way through their open conditions? And this horse is, has, um, you know, now done that as a four-year-old improving. Um, and, uh, and so that's where I'd go. If this race was run a year ago, Runaway Rumor would have probably been under even money, but it has not been a particularly good 2022. Jorge Abreu's barn has undoubtedly been much better at Saratoga than it was at the recently concluded Belmont meet. Do you give her any chance off a race where maybe it looks like she woke up just a tad in the Dr. James Penny Memorial? I mean, after all, we're talking about a horse that two starts back against New York Reds was six to five. Yeah, I mean, they came home very quickly in that race. And so... Um... You know, again, I think the hard the hard thing is sort of judging, you know, how this horse fits in the context of, you know, getting back to New York breads. Um, but it was more it was a wake up. It, it was an improved effort over over, you know, sort of what has happened recently. I, you know, you're going to get a little bit of a better price, but I, I don't know. I mean, it, overall, it's, again, it's, it's, it just doesn't seem to be the same and doesn't seem to be the same as she was a year ago. And and it's, it's hard to tell whether that was, uh, you know, real or, or an illusion. I like to, of course, zig when the public zags. So now that everybody's giving up on Runaway Rumor, it piques my interest just a tad. Worth noting that when we're film taping this the night before these races, there is a chance of weather on Friday afternoon. Obviously, Make Mischief becomes <laughs> an overwhelming favorite in this race should the race be moved to the main track. Yeah, hundred percent, and maybe that's what they're they're hoping for. So who knows? It does look like there could be weather, and that you know that could change the eighth and tenth for sure. I'd still bet Ice Princess against her on the dirt, but we'll see how that ends up happening. One more to go on this New York Bread Showcase Day. I think it has a name for it. I don't know what it is, and I apologize, but I'm going to call it the Traverse Eve New York Bread Showcase, brought to you by the New York Thoroughbred Breeders, who's bringing you this podcast as well. Race 10 is the West Point at a mile and a 16th on the Mellon Turf Course, and we see a lot of the usual suspects who, of course, a horse dear to your heart, Dot Matrix, faced on a number of occasions including City Man, who was an open company graded stake winner last time out. What can you say about the New York Red program that you've got a favorite in here who's coming off a grade three win? There's a lot to be said for that. This horse is considered a potential contender for the grade one four-star Dave. City Man, too much for them on the turf? Yeah, I think so. And I, I lied earlier. I, I said that Dot Matrix had won the West Point. I actually finished second twice, including, I believe, once to uh, – I believe he was finished second once to Therapist in this race. So, um, I, yeah, I mean, City Man – should be better than these. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was disappointing they didn't run the four star Dave, Dave, that they didn't have bigger fish to fry than this spot. Um, all that being said, he better have his running shoes. I mean, these are good, you know, these are the sort of same set of warriors that we've seen year after year in this, you know, spot. Some like it hot brown. Um, his run here, they're taking the blinkers off. Maybe they'll get a little bit of rain and give in the ground, and maybe that'll help him, you know, hold on to his lead. I know he'll jump out there and set a fast pace and be lengths in front, and, you know, you, uh, everyone will be sort of holding on uh, to see if he comes back to the rest of the field. But but City Man is just better than these. And, um, you know, is in, is you know that last effort was really strong and really, again, should have set him up to run the four-star uh, four day. But uh, he's with this group, and, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be a disappointment if he didn't get things done, done here. But uh, he'll have to do some running. No doubt about it. The two dot matrix runner-up finishes – in the West Point, one to Offering Plan in 2019, and the other two to Naldi in 2020. Ah, okay. <laughs> They're wrong about that, too. That's I'm trying to upstage you at all. You owned him after all, but it's okay. Um, Jerry the Nipper is a horse who took a real step forward in his first turf start last time out for Todd Pletcher. Are you buying or selling this horse off of that big effort? Well, I mean, he's going to be a price. So, um, but I guess I would be buying to the extent that. Um, you know, a lot of other these these a lot of these horses we've seen before. Some like it hot brown, um, uh, to some extent. City man cross border. Uh, you know, a therapist. These are these are horses that have run in this race in this division for a while. And you know, here we have a newcomer who ran really well first down, and uh, um, you know, ought to be well positioned. Um, you know, at maybe four or five lengths behind uh, a a a, a um, a, a hell bent on uh, a hell bent on the lead uh, flying out there blinkers off some like it hot brown but still um you know I, I i guess kind of at the number at the number it's it's uh it's it's hard not to um it's hard not to take some interest that was a weekend where todd pletcher had i think seven wins 
and Jerry the Nipper was one of them. He did so uh, despite setting a really robust pace as well on a super firm Widener turf course. Therapist is a horse that you mentioned. I think he's most effective at seven eighths to a mile around one turn. But look, with Irad on board, this horse is going to get a lot of money. Six to one on the morning line. I could see him drifting below that. I don't want any part of him on the win end. Do you? No, nah, he's just it's it's been too long between wins. Um, I you know he'll be coming late. He could hit the board, but I, it's not. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't take any part of him. I mean, it really is City Man's race to lose, isn't it? Clearly, I mean, so clearly his race to lose, and and he was. He was sort of bizarrely good in the Forbidden Apple last time out. He runs back to that. I mean, they're all in very, very big trouble. One runner that's entered in here that's also entered in Saturday, Sword Dancer, is Cross Border, who's done some of his best work right here at Saratoga. Six lifetime wins over the Saratoga turf courses, and he really didn't run that bad in the Bowling Green. Two starts back in the Kingston. He was not quite himself. It looks like Father Time might be catching up to him a tad. I think that's right. I'm curious to know, uh, you know, I'm curious to know what they're – you know, where, the, where, where they will run him, um, you know, maybe a little given the ground, if there's some rain will help him as an English channel. He's a horse that, that, you know, I liked a lot and, and back quite a bit a couple years ago, but it, it doesn't seem to be the same. And, and uh, you know, while he's been close, hasn't really shown much this year. I mean, you know, fourth and fifth place finishes, even if he's, you know, a couple lengths back, you know, ultimately aren't that strong. So I, I don't think he'd, he's the same. I'd be, I'd be surprised if he, um, I'd be surprised if he were a big factor in this race. I agree. I think a nice in-depth look at the West Point and this entire stakes program on New York Bread Showcase Day, Travers Eve at Saratoga Racecourse. Marshall, thanks so much for joining me. Always fun to talk a little New York Bread action. Yeah, anytime. Thanks. Really would like to thank New York Thoroughbred Breeders, specifically Naja Thompson, for his sponsorship this year. We'll have one more of these shows for New York Showcase Day, Empire Showcase Day, I think it's referred to, during the Belmont at Aqueduct Meet, which will take place in late October. Hopefully there's a few runners with the purple and black that are participating that day. It's been a big day for 10 strike racing in the past. Again, big thanks to New York Thoroughbred breeders and to my guest, Marshall Graham, Nick Tamro here until next time. Best of luck. Thanks.